Trees in video games are really cool. Making trees for video games sucks. As a professional game artist, every minute spent making a tree in Blender will forever be the minutes I wish I could take back the most. From the 2D cardboard cutouts that populate our retro racing games to the lush open worlds of games like Genshin Impact, I think trees are here to stay, but I don't want to model them anymore. The need for expansive open worlds and high fidelity graphics in the AAA space has kind of muddied up the expectations that indie game artists give themselves when creating their own games. And so one of the common challenges that many of them face is handling the creation of trees and foliage, a staple of any indie title. Hey, I'm Shin Ghidorah, or Justin, and I made an add-on for Blender so I never have to model a tree again. And then I made it even better so that the Blender community never has to model a tree again either. Since the dawn of 3D games, the evolution of hardware and video game performance is almost directly tied to how stupid a tree looks in a video game. Ask a 3D modeler to create a photorealistic landscape with colliding mountains and sand erosion, and he'll get it done before lunch. But ask the same guy to hand model a tree, and I'll tell you it's a different department, and hastily pack his things and leave the company. And that's because trees are complex. The topology of a tree, by nature, is a complex fractal with tapered thickness that has to be hand-modeled cylinder by cylinder, planned with intention, pushing thousands of vertices around until you get something that actually pops. It's gotta be UV mapped to perfection, it needs to be scattered with enough branches and leaves to actually give it a silhouette, it needs its normals and vertex data processed for game engines, and it has to somehow be low poly enough to be populated all over an open world without making your Xbox do one of those panic attacks from Puss in Boots. As graphical expectations rise, 3D artists are now expected to actually sculpt the trunk and every branch of the tree, and if that's not torture, then I don't know what is. I swear everything was fine until some guy invented the polygon. Studios around the world have competed to find the ultimate solution. From expensive procedural systems for AAA studios like Speedtree with thousands of photorealistic assets, to free-to-use alternative solutions like Blender's sapling add-on, where the menu disappears every time you have a thought and crashes Blender if you place more than a single tree. Yeah, no, something tells me the 250,000 polygon nanite enabled tree in your Android game is definitely you pushing graphical boundaries and expectations, and totally not just you grabbing the first Birch 03 LOD from Quixel Megascans. Now, as a badass 3D artist, I had a manic breakdown after modeling his 50th trunk, I knew there was a better way. And as luck would have it, I had just enough experience, creativity, and hatred for hand-making trees to create the better way myself. In Blender, there's a fancy procedural modeling system called Geometry Nodes, where you can build interactive systems that automatically spawn and transform geometry, and it seemed like the perfect solution to my tree dilemma. I'm just a barbaric vertex pusher, but I knew that if I never wanted to model a tree again, that was going to have to change. Originally, I wasn't even going to attempt making this tool, but here's the thing. I wanted to make a game, a video game, with multiple trees, trees that look nice and doesn't destroy my computer. Unfortunately, the third party tools I'd purchased and experimented with to solve this problem all had problems of their own. They were either unnecessarily complex, lacked controls that I thought were extremely obvious to have were completely unoptimized for games, or cost an arm and a leg to use for more than three months. So burdened with glorious purpose, I gave myself the mission to create the easiest to use tree creator in Blender that's actually meant for video games and then pack it with a ton of cool features. The coolest part about being a game artist is that when you're playing video games for 8 hours straight, you can confidently walk out of your room and say you just finished a ton of research. After that ton of research, I came to a couple conclusions on what I would need to create the go-to tool for trees. I'm going to skip over the history of how trees have gotten more and more taxing on both our hardware and artists because no duh, but in short, the innovation necessary to turn a 2D alpha card that billboards towards the camera, suggesting the impression of a tree, was a huge milestone, and we still rely on that hack to this day. Here's a list of things I learned by hurting my eyes staring at trees in stylized video games for way too long. Number one is that trees were born to be procedural. I stared at different trees until they broke down their components. It's just curves, growing off of other curves that can generate UV map geometry that can also taper with very thickness. I'd need to develop a system that can generate the branches as well as procedurally generate a remeshed volume for normal attributes and point scattering. I also needed to create a flexible canopy system that can scatter leaves in preset modes to replicate the looks of popular video games. Finally, we needed the controls to make a tree into the tree of our dreams. The idea of drawing the trunk and options to crinkle the branches and distort the leaves, etc, etc, convinced me to make a sick as hell add-on with ease of use in mind. Number two is that the poly counts are deceivingly low. 
A lack of hard edges in the polygons and the intention to populate massive real-time scenes with them mean that even when they're looking good, they're not getting the same polygonal treatment that characters receive. This is not a hard rule for the AAA industry where you can confidently shame your consumer base for not buying an extra 2TB hard drive to keep your game installed, but I digress. Number 3 is that it's all in the normals. A tree with edited normals is eventually good, but a normalist tree is forever bad. Using pretty basic shapes to transform normal data onto the clusters of leaf canopies, we can get the nice fluffy shading that lets our trees snug themselves nicely into our scene. Without it, even a beautifully modeled tree will look like steel wool. Number 4 is that a fractal only goes so far. In a real tree, we're going to be seeing splits on splits on splits creating the complex structure. But there's a funny thing that happens when you try to model every branch in Blender. It makes you want to die. So the video game industry solved this by limiting themselves to a trunk, primary, and secondary branches. Anything more is really gluttonous. A lot of the branches were actually 2D image cards as well, saving themselves even more polygons. 5 is how the leaves behave is the final brushstroke. Once the tree branches are finished, how the actual leaves are placed onto something like a video game tree actually comes down to a pretty specific yet subjective science. And the last major thing I learned was about the alpha card dilemma. The ultimate solution to populating leaves for video games is the mythical alpha card, an image texture with an alpha channel that tells the renderer where the image is transparent based on a black and white opacity map. The problem is, when these transparent objects are stacked on each other, it hurts the computer's little bones. With hundreds of complex foliage cards stacking on each other due to populating on the branches themselves, we're torturing our machines. And I think I have found a better way. I call it Treebox, and it's out now ready to help you make your dream foliage without the complex setup. It's an easy to use, super customizable add-on powered by geometry nodes with a bunch of preset materials to make your indie game life easier. It's a one-time purchase, and I'm already working on a ton of free updates, like the new Ivy Generator where you draw overgrowth in seconds. I'm just going to drop the discount code for the ArtStation Edition in this random part of the video to reward you awesome people that are actually watching. And if you can, make sure to sub and like so I can actually come back to YouTube in the future. Version 1.1 already popped out with support for pine trees and ivy. Here's a commission I've been working on where all my trees are exclusively made with tree box. There's definitely more that goes into trees, because of course there is, and that's what made me dive so deep into the topic. I knew I had to make something that could really benefit the community, and decided to learn all this random stuff about trees so that the indie game scene can spend more time making awesome games and less time sweating over the specific rotation of a tree branch when there's already so much to do in life. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Let's go ahead and switch gears here and take a deeper look at Treebox and how it can help you completely change the way you make foliage for your games. To download Treebox, I'm going to hop into Edit Preferences and then go to the Add-ons menu. By selecting Install from Disk at the dropdown, I can install the .python add-on file from any version. To get the generators Treebox is trying to create, we're going to add the Treebox asset folder to the add-ons directory. After that, I'm going to go to the File Paths menu to add that same Treebox asset folder to the asset library. Now I have Treebox installed as both an add-on and as an asset library, so I can grab any bonus assets like materials and presets. With Treebox installed, all I have to do is press N on my keyboard to open up my panels, and I'll see my Treebox panel at the bottom. We have an option to create a tree generator and a canopy generator. Treebox is sort of like an archaic foliage designer. You don't have to use the canopy generator with the tree generator, and you don't have to use the tree generator with the canopy generator, but they still work great as a team. Once you have a finished tree, Treebox comes with a tree to mesh button, which is important to remember as it actually applies the UV maps, smooth normals, geometry, and everything else you need to wrap it up for game engines in a click. The actual generator menus, located in the modifier window of the details panel, is something I'll definitely need to make a dedicated video on, and it's not because it's difficult to use, but because there are so many fun options and little tricks you can do in Treebox that I'm just not able to fit it into this video alone. Here's the gist of it. When you add a tree, you should get something pretty good looking. You can change the seeds within each section of the menu to get wildly different results. But like any good tree designer, you can go much deeper by changing the tree shapes, thickness, distortion, smoothness, height, and so much more. There are custom controls for resolution, and there's a few toggles to do interesting things like drawing the trunk or bending the branches. The same highly flexible philosophy applies to the canopy generator as well where we have multiple modes to switch between styles and a procedural scattering system to build custom shapes. You can assign the canopy generator to the tree generator with a click, 
or you can assign a custom object to spawn instead if you're going for a different style or nanite leaf cards. I'll be including shape presets in the next update so that you can have multiple starting points. Instead of going into every option, let's look at a really important workflow within Treebox, which is switching between volume scattering and traditional scattering. By default, Treebox uses a mode called volume scatter to scatter the leaves. In this mode, changing the leaf count is actually adding little spheres or cubes all over the branches. We can actually switch to the volume preview to see where these shapes are being spawned. This pile of primitives is then remeshed into a beautiful blob, which gives us the points that we're actually scattering on. This also gives us a really stylized and fluffy look that I wanted to prioritize in this add-on. The trade-off is that you'll probably want to use traditional scattering when aiming for more complex silhouettes and actually want to use the full power of the canopy generator. Now that we know all that, let me show you how to switch between modes. In the tree generator, I'm going to switch the preview mode to branches only and set the leaf count to zero. This will prevent Blender from needing to render all the wacky settings we want to change within the canopy generator, saving us from crashes. Now I'm going to switch the scatter mode from volume to default. In the canopy generator, I'll also set it to default mode and then change some settings around to get the canopy shape I enjoy. Now we can switch to the full tree preview and we can see that these more complex canopies get to spawn on the actual branches now. You can spawn any object you want, the mode is just switching between the spawn on branches versus the spawn on volumes. After a bit of tweaking, I'm pretty happy with this tree, so I'm going to go ahead and click tree to mesh in the add-on. We can see that even though the tree was completely procedural, it exists in perfect game engine harmony now as a solid and finalized UV map geometry. Even better, we can use the asset library to test out different materials on the tree, something I'll be expanding on even more. Not bad, huh? The pine tree generator uses a different set of geometry node tools to build this tool, but the features are just as deep and we still have all the powerful features we need to customize it. I'm going to change the leaf and branch count and then the seed to change up this pine tree. Then I'll toggle on the draw trunk option and simply go into edit mode and draw a curve so I can add my own style to this tree. Last but not least is that mentioned ivy generator. I'm really happy with how this bonus tool came out. It only needs basic blender curves to create a scattered mess of fluffy ivy that you can use to either finely detail your props or completely decorate your overgrown environment. Depending on the section the generator's in, you'll probably want to click the corresponding two mesh button in the add-on menu. I hope this little preview can give you an idea of the potential tree box can add to your artistic arsenal. As a small creator, the stronger the support is, the better the free updates get to be. You can check out the roadmap on the store page or on my Discord. I'll be making another video that's going to go over all of these controls, parameters, and some really neat tips and tricks that I'm excited to get into that can turn you into a 3D forest master, including covering the pipeline to go from Treebox and Blender to a finished tree in Unreal Engine. I'll also be making videos covering a lot of my other tools, tutorials, and rants in the 3D stratosphere, so subscribe so I can have the willpower to make another one of these. If you haven't heard of me, which I'm sure you haven't, then you may not know how long I've been around in the creative space, but I hope to change that with this channel. I've been working pretty hard to give to artists recently, and I'm proud to have recently released a course on creating stylized 3D environment art exclusively on Stylized Station, where we use Treeit to model the trees instead of Treebox for an Unreal Engine 5 scene. It's an incredible course, and I highly recommend it to everyone wanting to learn how to make game art, but with my new add-on out, I can confidently say that I would use Treebox over Treeit for my foliage any day. So that's Treebox. It's out now on the Blender Market and ArtStation. Whichever you prefer is super cool to me. If you're a 3D artist or indie game developer, I really do think that this add-on can be a big help. So check it out. And please, please leave a comment letting me know what you want to see out of your Dream Foliage tool for games. Or let me know if you want to learn about more 3D topics in the comments. Or just comment something or YouTube will banish me to whatever algorithm still pushes out those low-res sim comparisons on YouTube Shorts. And yeah, I'm Shin Ghidorah. Hi, my art station has some knee packs like tree box, mat box, and lazy paint box, and you'll see my best art there too. I really want to thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn how to create custom stylized materials for your own props and scenes, you can check out my stylized material masterclass video right here on YouTube too. By the way, as both an artist and occasional educator, I can highly recommend joining my Discord channel Cozy Ghidorah if you want to stay updated on all the things I'm up to. I also do portfolio reviews, uh, previews on the stuff I'm doing, art chats, and extra discounts for fun. Now, I know I said I'd make a video about shaders shortly after I made my stylized materials video, and it'll happen soon, so make sure you check out the uh, masterclass first. 
Really appreciate you watching and have a fantastic day. And so, yeah, I put a lot of love into all this. And maybe next time I'll talk about how much bevels annoy me or something. Um, I'll keep you on your toes. Uh, bye now.